Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Hey gorgeous and welcome to my channel. I'm Gobana Shimange and this is how I do things. The show where you send me your questions and I let you know I would do things and I can take it as entertainment, use it as advice, take it, don't take it, use it, don't use it at all, listen, do what you will with it, do you know why, do you know why, because na, me, ek, ma, ha, no professional, I am no professional whatsoever, I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes, I asked you, send me questions on Instagram and y'all send me loads of questions, <laughs> some of them very intrusive, very TMI, but we'll see which ones we get through today. But before we get into those questions, I'd really like to thank Amore Designs for dressing me today. I'm absolutely loving this. You know me and the arms. I just, I just can't get enough of the arms. So if you want to find out how you can get your hands on this outfit, it is in my description. Let's get into that Q and A. So like I said, you guys sent me pages and 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 pages worth of questions. I'm still scrolling more questions. <laughs> so I'm going to answer as many as I can. Obviously I can't get through all of them. Let's get into it. I'm gonna try and count. As soon as I lose count, this Q&A is over. So if you did not know, I'm turning 31. So I am 31 years old now. And the number one most asked question is what would I say to my 20 year old self? Nothing. Question one, nothing. I would say nothing to my 20 year old self. I think I've been quite an ambitious young girl. I've gone through a lot of things. I'm a huge dreamer. I've picked up on things, left things. There was a 10 year space in my life where every single year, no, about seven years, every single year I did something different. I've always worked throughout my varsity life. So ever since I was in first year, I worked while I was doing my studies in university and I was studying to become a chartered accountant at the time. And I worked throughout that. So it was like part-time working while I was a full-time student. And every single year I did something different. I did, I tried TV, I did radio, I did marketing, I did, I had my own business. Every single year I did something different. And I learned so much. I even had my own YouTube channel at the age of 20. Well, it was a news channel, I was a presenter on a news channel. And every single year I learned something absolutely amazing. And I went off to things, I had tenacity, even though I lacked confidence at the same time, I couldn't really speak up for myself. But I always had big dreams because I know God has a big plan for me and I felt pushed by the Holy Spirit to do something. So I did something every single year. And I would tell my 20 year old, nothing. My 20 year old self, I'd say nothing to her. I'd wanted to make the exact same mistakes. I'd wanted to go through the same life lessons so that she can get to the point where she is now, where I am now, because I really like it here. I like it a lot. Number two, what keeps me going is there's a dream. As I'm speaking to you guys right now, I'm behind the camera, there is my vision board, which I actually created a couple of days ago, mid-year vision board, which I redid. It's very simple, it's very beautiful. And the things on that vision board keep me going. I have a vision. I feel like God has always spoken to me since I was very young about what I should do and what I shouldn't do in my life. And that vision has always been so blurry in terms of how am I gonna get there? But for the first time in a long time, I feel like I'm on that track to get to where God has painted this vision for me. I mean, I have visions such as the staircase in my house, about the view from the building, from my office, about the view from my house, you know, all of those things. So it's, it's how do I get to that place? And I feel like I'm actually on track for that. So that's what keeps me going is a vision that I believe God has given me since I was extremely young. And it finally, finding the pieces and it coming together. That's what keeps me going. Number three is actually from Amore Designs, the designer of today's fit. <laughs> and the question is, being a wife, a mother, a businesswoman, what do you do to take care of yourself? So I do my hair <laughs> and I just take me time. I sleep, <laughs> I sleep, honestly. I sleep. I don't know how else to tell you, but the most amazing thing you can do for yourself is just sleep. Just alone time and sleep. So I like having my alone time and reading a book 
or just sleeping. That is the number one thing I can do to take care of myself because I think that doing your hair, your nails, doing all of those things are maintenance. It's not even taking care of yourself, it's not even spoiling yourself, that's maintenance. Extra sleep, above the eight hours that you're supposed to get at night, extra sleep. So question number four, how many babies or kids do I want? I want as many as God can bless me with. I'd really ideally like seven, but I'm 31 and now pregnant with baby number two. You heard it first here on my YouTube channel. Haven't even announced it on Instagram, but I don't know how many babies my body can give me. I don't know how many babies God has got planned for me. So I'd really like seven. I'd really like to have a couple of twins along the way. I'm not gonna be pregnant seven times, but as many as God will give me. And I do believe that if my body can only give me three, I'm open for adoption. So, yeah. Number five, what do you do if a man ignores you after a fight? I ignore him back. I'm not gonna force someone to speak to me. That is the truth. Um, I'm going to continue to talk to you. And if you want to ignore me, is your problem. <laughs> that's the type of person that I am if you want to be in a sour mood if you want to have a cloud over your head that's fine but your mood does not dictate my mood I will continue in my mood and I'm gonna be in a good mood I'm gonna pray I'm gonna get the Holy Spirit over me and I will not allow you to mess up my mood so if you're in a terrible mood that's fine that's up to you but I will continue being in a good mood and when you're ready to talk we can talk but we're not gonna pretend that the fight didn't happen I'm going to be in a good mood, but we're not going to pretend that the fight didn't happen. Um, but when you're ready, then you'll speak. But I'm not going to allow your mood, your dark cloud, whatever you're going through after a fight to affect how my day is going. It's not fair and I refuse to give someone that power to do that. Number six, are you happy with where you are? in all aspects of 31. I don't know what that means in all aspects of 31, but one thing that I did, and I, I know, I kind of know where the question is coming from. We have these expectations in terms of when I'm 25, I need to have achieved this. And when I'm 30, I need to be married with children. And I need to have bought my own house and I need to have had my first car. And I think I'm very happy for all the life lessons that I've gone through. You know, I've gone through very tough financial lessons in life and I'm very happy that I have been witness to some really tough financial lessons and I have also had my own financial lessons. And the reason why I'm saying this is you don't know where you will be and what plan God has for you. So putting these financial expectations on yourself in terms of your house and your car and all of those things by specific ages because that's what we do we say i need to be married by this time you don't know where your husband is you don't know when you're supposed to meet him you're supposed to have your house by this time you don't know where your financial life is going to be are you going to actually immigrate to a new country if you're thinking of immigrating to a new country then buying a house in the country that you are in might not actually be the best decision for you right now so those type of expectations I let go of that at the age of 25. I was just like, I'm not doing that because I am limiting myself to a lot of life experiences because I'm putting pressure on myself to live my life in a very specific way. God has spoken to me and I feel like the Holy Spirit guides everyone if we are willing to listen. And if we're willing to put our own and the world's expectations aside and we start to live according to God's expectations and the Holy Spirit's expectations of us, your life will be so much more fulfilling. You'll have so much more to have and to give and you'll have a much better life experience. But if you put pressure on yourself like that, you're cheating yourself of such an amazing life experience because of those expectations and because of the, when I'm 31, when I'm whatever. So my answer to that question, am I happy with where I am at 31? Yes, I am extremely happy <laughs> with where I am at 31. Um, I'd love to elaborate on that, but it's personal, but I am extremely happy. I'm very happy with where I am now. Number six, no, this was six. So this is seven. Let's say this is seven, okay? What's one thing you regret doing slash knowing earlier? Love, life, work, or friendships? Nothing, <laughs> nothing. I regret nothing. Again, everything in your life happens for a reason. And even the embarrassing moments needed to happen so that you could learn something 
or be something and be prepared for the moment that is coming later. I regret nothing. I honestly, there is a video where I speak about, you know, having broken my virginity at the age that I did and having slept with the men that I did, but I see why it was important for me to have done that so that I can actually see virginity from a completely different experience. Because you can learn from people who did everything right and you can learn from people who did everything wrong. And from my experience, I wish, I wish I would have held on to purity for a longer or that I was celibate for a longer period of time. However, I don't regret any of the things that I did because those lessons are important lessons that I get to pass down in how I do things, you know, as we share our stories. So I regret absolutely nothing. Um, some moments, there used to be a time when I used to be like, I wish I didn't go through that and I wish I didn't go through certain things, but I regret nothing. It's all very important. It was all extremely important to get me to where I am now. Even the really bad, bad, bad moments in my life, I see them as necessary now. And I wouldn't take anything away. <laughs> Number eight, you guys have a lot of questions about regrets. My gosh, do you regret studying finance? No, I do not regret studying finance. I'm happy I studied something that allows me to work in any industry. Having studied financial management, um, you can literally work in any industry, you can work anywhere. And even if you go into entrepreneurship, you take those lessons with you. They're very, very important. And I don't regret studying, even if I had studied something that I'm not using today, in any way, still wouldn't regret it. Number eight, would you ever work in corporate? No, why? <laughs> Maybe, I thought about it this morning and I was like, if, let's just say, um, somebody bought the company that I'm building now, like a, you know, a big corporate bought the company that I'm working now. And they said, come work in our offices to help the business continue to grow after they've bought a stake in my business. That's the only way I'm going into corporate. Only way. If somebody buys my company and it becomes part of another bigger company, and then I have to go work there to continue to run the business after they bought a stake in it. It's the only way. Other than that, no. I'm working for myself. I love the freedom. I love the freedom. There's nothing you can say to me about any corporate job that could give me the same amount of freedom that I have now from working for myself and working the way that I do. Like nothing, nothing. Number nine, many of you have asked me this question. Have you ever considered an acting career? I have and I was terrible. <laughs> that was the worst. I went to auditions. I made it pretty fun, a lot of auditions of popular televisions and television shows and soapies that we all know today in South Africa, but I didn't get the roles because I actually wasn't good at acting, but I was much younger. I think I was in my early twenties. I was much younger and I just wasn't good guys. I wasn't, it wasn't great. Number 10, ne? number 10, I guess sure. I don't know. We're just gonna say 10. How old are you and what did you study at uni? I am 31 and I studied financial management as my undergrad degree. And then I have a postgraduate degree in corporate communications. Number 12 was a cute question and I wanted to answer this one. Hey Kopano, do you have friends? Lols, I feel like you're always with hubby and baby. Do you like hang out? <laughs> the truth is yes, I do have friends. Um, I've got a very small circle of friends and it's not necessary that we are one circle. Is, you know one friend from here one friend from there and one friend from there I have I used to be an extremely social person and then I went through a period of time and this is like a seven year period of time where I just felt like I need to work on myself work on really good relationships and maybe there will be a time when I get into a girl gang again but I do have friends they were my bridesmaids um, one of them wasn't a bridesmaid but very very close friends from high school so I've got one friend from high school, one friend from primary school. Um, y'all, you guys know who y'all is. We chat all the time, we're very good close friends. And those are my friends, like those are my girls and my sister, that's it. Um, do I hang out guys? Get Corona, it's, it's a pandemic. <laughs> guys, it's a pandemic, okay? So if you don't see a person hanging out, it's because we all treat ourselves very differently during the pandemic. So some people go out and some people don't. I'm just one of those people who doesn't. And I'm extremely satisfied. Number 12, I'm just gonna say 12. What are you currently most proud of about yourself and what you've accomplished thus far? I think everything is accumulating and everything is building up. So I'm very happy with where we are 
right now from a business perspective from a life perspective um, so what am I most happiest about I'm happy about where we are really I am my relationship with God my relationship with the Holy Spirit what I am learning the track that we are on how I do things being consistent um, you know the business that we're building club she is I'm just very happy everything is building everything is getting better so I just feel blessed to be where we are and yeah what my biggest accomplishment is being here and being here with God and the Holy Spirit that is my biggest accomplishment okay final 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 question because I have so many people who ask the exact same question what is the one thing you wanted to do in your 20s but you didn't do and now you wish you did I could have probably answered that question differently three months ago my, per my perspective has changed a lot in terms of what is supposed to happen what it is not supposed to happen in my life and I regret nothing and regret doesn't only mean the things that you did you know regretting things you did but also regretting things you didn't do and I can't think of one thing in my head that I wish I had done in my 20s because I can still do it in my 30s 30 is not the end of the world 30 is not even old 30 is just fine it's just a number I can still have a lot of the things that I wanted in my 20s just because I had didn't have them in my 20s doesn't mean I can't have them in my 30s we need to stop limiting ourselves according to age because like I said we limit ourselves from so many experiences and so many beautiful things in our lives just because we think you need to do this before you're 30 or you don't do it at all it's nonsense oh okay now this is the last question how do you handle criticism criticism from your YouTube fans I get a lot of negative comments many of them you guys won't see because my number one reaction to negative comments is I delete them immediately I don't even I don't even wait to show my husband like I'll tell my husband oh I got this really mean comment from someone and I'll tell him the comment and he's like let me see I'm like oh I deleted it <laughs> and that's it literally disappears from my head as soon as that happens because it's gone out of sight out of mind but I get a lot of negative comments especially from men um, because they hate the content that I create a lot of men hate the content that I create because it gives women confidence it also makes men take ownership for the fact that if you're a trash man you're a trash man therefore you do not deserve a good woman you know so I talk to a lot of women about not accepting nonsense from men um, for example I have a YouTube video about harassment and it says why I hate working with men and I said it right at the beginning of the video that I don't hate men because they are God's creation I could never hate men but I did not like the experiences that I went through in work and unfortunately there's so many men in my comment section and I can't get to all the comments I get a lot of comments every single day and I can't get to all the negative comments by men but literally there are men who said I deserve to be harassed in the workplace and they don't understand the, the the extent to which women face harassment in the workplace and for men to say you deserve to be abused in the workplace to be um, to have your sexual boundaries or physical boundaries crossed and abused and for people to say you deserve that I can't even for me it blows my mind that men think that way so my perspective on negative comments and on people in general on judgment and this is for me as well is that any time a person speaks they can either speak from the holy spirit or they can speak from fear there's only two places you can speak from good place or a place of fear those are the only two places you can speak from. there's no middle ground it's either a good place which is the holy spirit or fear that's it so when you judge someone judgment almost always comes from fear and it is not fear of what the other person's doing it is of yourself when you judge someone else you see something in them that you harshly judge about yourself so any judgment that anyone passes on me in my comment section I know it's not about me it's about something that they did or something that they see or something that they experienced in their life and they hold that harsh judgment against themselves so I don't take it personally because I know it has nothing to do with me nothing absolutely nothing to do with me um, there are comments where people don't say things nice but they are constructive I don't know if it's critique where somebody would say oh Kapana, today your energy is not that great 
you know i'm saying it in a nice way but some people do say it in you know people have people are a bit edgy <laughs> rough around the edges and i don't take that personally i'm just like oh okay cool noted um but there are some comments that like they'll comment about my sex life they'll comment about my husband they'll say i have i have no idea what i'm talking about they'll say i mean i get some of the meanest comments and i can't remember them because i delete them and i also don't take them personally i realize that this person's not pointing their judgment at me their judgment has to do with their perspective and it's always projection so even if i judge someone else i have to think to myself what is it about the situation that triggers something about myself that makes me judge myself not them because all that happens when you judge someone else is you identify something in yourself that you judge harshly not someone else so no judgment even if you're judging someone else no judgment is against someone else it's always against yourself and it always comes from a place of fear so i don't take it i don't receive it i don't take accountability for other people's emotions or other people's experiences in life it's not me it's not my job i will never do that to myself so how do i handle negative comments um, and people hating in my comments immediately delete i do not take it personally and i realize it's not about me if somebody has a negative comment it's not about me if it comes from hate it's it's about them and something that they fear or that they hate in their own lives not me all right that was a lot of stuff okay that was a lot there was a lot there was a lot there was a bit of a longest video hope that you guys enjoyed that one thank you so much for all the birthday wishes on instagram and here on youtube and thank you thank you thank you for supporting this channel we'll continue to come back with some more energy and with some more content <laughs> but until next time beautiful people thank you so much for watching don't forget to, don't forget to give this a big thumbs up till next time bye Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for watching and thank you for making it till the end. Now if you are here at the very last minute of my video and you have not subscribed, subscribe and continue to binge watch. Until later days. Mm -hmm.